guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Denise. Welcome back back to Vlogmas. Um, it's currently twenty past six in the evening. Uh, I've been with a, I've been at the garage with Ian all day, so there's not really been that much to film. Um, Ian has come to a stumbling block. I can't talk today. A stumbling block with the engine, just because. Um, he was having problems with the timing, as you already know, and um, the one of the mechanics that Ian knows, uh, he works with Volkswagen cars and he specialises in Volkswagen cars and golfs and things, um, thinks that something is wrong and it might need replacing. I don't know what it is. Don't ask me. <laughs> I don't know. Um, and then Ian put his gearbox back together today. That's what we went and picked up yesterday. Um, and then he's still then at the garage now. Um, I think him and Bill's are going to be putting up new lights tonight. So I don't know what time Ian's going to be home. It is Friday and I am now home. I've been Tesco on the way home to get myself some dinner. Ian's going to sort himself out while he's there. Um, but I really fancy jacket potato. So I went to Tesco and I picked, I once was going to pick up some proper jacket potatoes. They didn't have any like the big, really big potatoes. So I just had to buy a bag, but make sure that there was big potatoes in there. Um, so they're in the microwave at the moment and then I will be putting them in the oven to crisp the skin up a little bit. I like to eat the skin on my jacket potatoes. Um, so I like them a bit crispier, but I start them off in the microwave. Um, it's how my mum done it and it's how I was taught. And that's just how I do it. If I want a quick sort of jacket potato, I don't bother putting it in the oven. I just put it in the microwave. But I do like it when the skin goes crispy. So that's what I'm having for dinner with cheese and beans. I have put a lasagna in the oven as well. Um, it's a Slimming World one from Iceland. And <clears throat> I don't know whether I'm going to like it. So I thought I'd pull it in and hope for the best. Um, so... Yeah, it's not been um, <clears throat> very eventful today. I haven't cast on for the other uh, glove. I'm going to do that tonight and just sit here, catch up with some vlogmases as I'm about four days behind. Um, just where I've been at the garage and things. And I've become, TMI, very snotty today. And I just hope that I'm not getting a cold. Um, Casey, when I was at Casey's the other day, They've all had a cold, um, and today I've just become very snotty. So, <laughs> I hope I don't get a cold. Um, also, I just wanted to come on as well, because someone asked on uh, one of the comments on my videos um, if I could talk about how I, le I learnt to knit and crochet, who taught me, and things like that. Let me actually get the um, comment up, just so that I can... Um, relay it properly and answer it um, in a bit more detail um, <clears throat> so I'm just going to be doing sort of a little um, not Q&A but like answering that question um, it's uh, love the video can you do a video on how you started knitting and crochet who taught you that would be lovely I'm not going to name the person but um, it is on my day 15 if you do want to go and see who it was uh, that was the microwave pinging and I'm going to put the potatoes in the oven in a little while um, so yeah anyway I start I let me start right back from the beginning when I was probably about eight um, my nan tried to teach me how to knit she was a knitter and a crocheter um, because I'm left-handed I could not grasp the aspect of having to use my right hand to throw because my nan was a thrower um <clears throat> and I just was getting all in a kerfuffle and I just couldn't really work out what I was doing and things like that so I sort of gave up she did try teaching me I couldn't get the hang of it so then um my nan sort of said like because you're left-handed, I can't really carry on teaching you because I can't do it left-handed. Um, so teaching you left-handed will be quite difficult. So that was that. Then when I went to secondary school, we did textiles. Um, we did sewing for a lot of it. Uh, so in year seven, eight and nine, uh, I did textiles. And in 10 and 11, 
here in the UK anyway, back when I was at school, uh, that's when we did our GCSEs and that's when you chose the subjects that you wanted to do. I didn't, cho I didn't choose textiles, which I am quite gutted about, to be honest. I chose um, geography and product design. I really liked product de design at the time. It was sort of working, uh, woodworking and um, making like circuit boards and um, melting metals down to make different things. And it, yeah, so that was that. Um, but it wasn't until obviously, I think it was year seven or eight. So I must've been about 12 or 13 that they taught taught us how to knit in um, secondary school in whatever year it was I can't remember now and because I was left-handed and obviously the teacher has obviously learnt to teach people left-handed even though I knit right-handed and I was taught right-handed um, I think the teacher sort of knew how to teach I don't know I really don't know maybe it was because I was a bit older I understood a bit more where when my nan tried to teach me I was still quite young um she didn't try to teach me to crochet just she just taught me how to knit or tried to teach me how to knit um so in school I learned to knit and I just learned the garter stitch I didn't learn how to purl or anything and I literally made um a long piece of material <laughs> that uh at the time when we was at school we weren't allowed to take the knitting needles home uh, so we had to put our stitches onto a pencil and what we did was we put a little bit of blue tack on either end of the pencil so the stitches didn't fall off if we wanted to carry on at home and because I know that or I knew that my nan knitted I knew that I could take my piece of knitting the little bit of wool that I had home and carry on um, and that is when my nan taught me how to purl I think because I already got the aspect of how to throw the yarn and whatever, I sort of picked it up a little bit better. So I did that in school. I didn't carry it on or anything. It wasn't something that I was really interested in, in at the time. Um, and that was that. And then when I was at work, I was, I think I must have been about 19, I think. I was at work and I worked with a lady that um, was a bit older than me and she had a daughter that was pregnant and she was like oh I'm going to start knitting. She knew how to knit, she knit just in the background and I never knew she knitted or anything um, and I was like oh I can knit and um, I'm going to say her name Leslie. Uh, she was like oh can you like, like properly and I was like no I just sort of know the basics and it was from Leslie, sorry I'm rattling the the jingle toy, um, it was from Leslie that I learned everything that I needed to know at the time. She went, let me give you a pattern and I will help you follow the pattern and she did. She taught me how to increase stitches, she taught me how to decrease stitches in certain ways like slip slip knit or uh, slip one, knit one, pass slip stitch over and every, all, all things like that. Anyway, she taught me how to read a pattern, she taught me how to knit from that pattern and actually make a garment and I will be forever thank thankful for Leslie teaching me how to do the basics and then from then I just sort of picked up things um oh I've got a coffee on there I nearly spilled it <laughs> and I just picked up things as I went along so from the age of 19 I have been knitting sort of continuously um I'm 34 now so that's 15 years um yeah so it is sort of um been something that I've always really loved and I've really enjoyed. Uh, it wasn't until much, much later on that I learnt to crochet. Um, Leslie did know how to crochet. She taught me the basics. Um, but I didn't really pick it up. And I used to buy the Simply Knitting magazines. And in the back of one of these Simply Knitting magazines that I got was a little tutorial and showing you how to crochet. 
and I didn't really grasp, grasp it that much. Plus my nan knew how to crochet um, and she did try teaching me and I did pick it up a little bit, don't get me wrong. And yeah, but I was mainly a knitter and that is my the thing that I did first and that is the thing that I have done for the longest time and then I just sort of picked up crochet one day and I just sort of went with it. I don't ever really remember learning how to do it if that makes sense it was just something that I knew what to do. Um, I'm trying to think what was my first crochet project um, to be honest, I cannot remember for the life of me what I crocheted first. It was probably like a little flower or some little motif of some sort. Um, I honestly can't remember. And I just sort of picked it up really, really quickly. I know a lot of people, they either can knit and not crochet or crochet and not knit. Um, I can do both and I'm thankful for that because I enjoy ju both just as much and I like the um I like being able to do a knitted knitted item or a crocheted item and think that I haven't got to worry if it's knitted or crochet because I can't do one or the other um I know a lot of people <clears throat> find knitting puts a lot of tension on their shoulders especially Jan um, but I don't really find anything like that at the moment anyway um, it might be something in the future that I might find that I can't do one or the other um, last week I think it was because I was crocheting so much my uh, middle knuckle was really really painful um, and that sort of went away but I don't know whether that's because I was crocheting so much holding the hook and the pressure it was putting on my hand and so on and so forth uh, but it's okay and it was only sore for like a day and a half and then it sort of went away um, I use certain hooks because I know that the long metal hooks I can't use because they dig into my hand um, but yeah, I'm just thankful that I can do both, and I love both as just as much. But I do find that when oh, that is um, Ian ringing. I do apologise. Um, I do find that if I do one more than the other, I do prefer that. But then as soon as I go back to the other, I really enjoy that too. So um, let me just get my phone. Hold on. That was just Ian saying that um, asking when he got paid. <laughs> But anyway, <laughs> it's not yet. <laughs> um, yeah, so I love both just as much. I'm probably going to repeat myself a little bit here because I can't remember what I've just already said. Um, but yeah, that is pretty much how I learnt to knit and crochet. Um, I wouldn't say that I would do more than one than the other. It just depends on what patterns that I come across and and so on and so forth. Um, there was a time that uh, before I could crochet, so I I have like all the different knitting needle sizes and I've got straight needles. Um, I have now got circular needles but back then I, I primarily used straight needles um, and it got to a stage where I didn't knit for a little while. It must have been for about a year. So between the ages of 19 and let's say 28 um, there was a time that I didn't do any knitting or anything um, I don't know why I just sort of come out of the mood um, as they say if you you crojo goes but obviously this is with knitting uh, so I did and I'm so glad that I didn't, but I was thinking at the time to just get rid of all my knitting needles and all the bits of wool that I had at the time, um, which wasn't a lot. It was just like a little storage box that I had with oddments and things. Um, I wouldn't really go out and buy a big bulk load of yarn and, and bits. Um, it That sort of come more since I've been on YouTube and seen other people's stashes and what they use and what they use it for. Um, and things like that so I only had sort of bits and bobs at the time 
odds and ends of what I've used and what's left over. Um, yeah, so I was thinking of absolutely like getting rid of everything. Um, and then I, it just never happened. And then all of a sudden I got the bug big time again. Um, and you know when you just think to yourself, I'm so glad that I didn't get rid of any of this. Um, but that bug has never gone away yet. <laughs> um, it's not, never gone away um, since sort of I've got over that one. Um, and I've always had the bug to knit or crochet something. At least pick up crochet. I don't know. I don't want to say at least once a day. Knitting or crochet, should I say. I don't want to say at least once a day because sometimes I don't do any at all. And sometimes I could sit there all day and do my knitting and crochet. Um, so it is definitely, um, it's like I at least pick it up once a week. Let's put it that way. Twice a week. Um, I might sit there and just put a couple of stitches in things or so, whatever. But I don't think I will, in the near future, get the... Um, discouraged by it and not want to do it anymore um, because I've got the bug big time and I think YouTube does help so much with um, inspiration and you just see something someone's made and you're like wow that is amazing or that is really really nice and then you go rummaging on Pinterest or Ravelry or the internet somewhere for patterns and you're like oh that one's nice that one's nice and then you end up with about five that you want to do <laughs> um that happens to me all the time and there's always something in my list or in my mind that I want to do so I know that I will not be st stopping in the near time future at all um so yeah that is that <laughs> that is how I learned to knit and crochet um I really learned to learn to crochet through YouTube more than anything else um, watching tutorials and things like that so if you are not a knitter or not a crocheter I would say just go on YouTube you're here watching me anyway go and just search for uh, knitting for beginners crochet for beginners and there are some really really brilliant people out there that do tutorials I'm not a tutorial person. I've been asked to do tutorials a couple of times and I'm not set up for it. I get in a kerfuffle um, and there is better people out there that, than me that could teach you how to knit or crochet. Different if you was in person, but even then when I've taught my sister to crochet and I taught my friend to crochet, it was still a little bit awkward because I just want to do it really, really quickly. Obviously they're learning, you have to slow down a bit. So... But there is so many good people out there. Just for instance, um, if you want to learn to crochet, then there's Bella, Bella Coco. Um, she has her own YouTube channel. And for knitting, there's Very Pink Knits. And she's brilliant at teaching you how to do so many different things. Um, so I'm just putting it out there if that's something that you're interested in. I'm going to go and do my dinner now. Um, I probably won't come back on this evening. This is all that's going to be this video today. Uh, tomorrow, I don't really know what's happening tomorrow either. It's going to be a bit of a who knows where, when, what, why sort of couple of days. Um, I'm going to cast on for the other glove tonight and hopefully get that done. And then I can show you that tomorrow. So thank you for watching today. I hope to see you all back here tomorrow. Thank you so much and thank you for watching. If you're not subscribed, then please hit that subscribe button. Um, my channel is showing that I have 1,400 subscribers. Uh, but if I go into my live count um, uh, website thing, it's showing at uh, 1,398. Um, so I don't know what one is wrong. But <laughs> thank you to each and every one of you that sit there and watch my videos every day when I do an everyday vlog or every every video I just want to say thank you so much it means so much and it's appreciated and I just am amazed that people want to sit there and watch me <laughs> thank you so much anyway I'm gonna go and stop rambling thank you for watching and I shall see you tomorrow bye